哈、啊，你会说英文吗？我会说一点。Ah, may the biosphere and your chosen deities bless you. I bring bounty for trade. I just had a couple of guys who have something similar. What were you looking for trade?、Mm, I was thinking, one point five liters of portable hydrosphere. That's a lot of hydrosphere for scrap. I could do you point five. I humbly choose the right to refuse your offer. It seems I've wasted your time. My apologies. Hold on. What have you got there? Oh, these. I got them from a Colombian arc ship many tons ago. They're、uh, really helpful. Very expensive. What did I pay for them? Gravity picks. Mem Shane is back. There are few and far in between. I would pay a good price for that. What were you looking for? <sighs> that would take much consideration. These aren't your standard portage device. These are crafted from polymethyl methacrylate, with a density of just 1.8 cubic grams. Perfect for environmental manipulation. Ah, I could maybe do 50 ICR. Ah, I have no need of imperial credits of the realm. I was thinking more 1.8 liters of shui. Yeah, I don't have that kind of money. Are yours monopurpose? No, these are razors. You could cut a hole in a hole. They are perfect for removing detritus from bounty and reducing your storage. I'm guessing yours are non-crystalline vitreous as well, right? Correct. Well, you have yourself an alum right there. Congrats on your scav. Anyway, have a great day. Blessings to you. Small company from America,、um, headed up by Chris Fahey, who is a really nice guy. He's been mega supportive of things that I have been doing, and as a result, we launched the Rob Chapman Signature Gravity Pick, of which I am tremendously proud. And I just wanted to quickly talk about why I think gravity picks are so damn good. <laughs> First reason is they're not flexible. They don't bend. There's no.、Um, they're not malleable. They're going to stay rigid until you shave them down, and that's going to take you a long time. In fact, I have the first gravity pick, which was a razor shape that I ever got, still、uh, in the back of of a wallet somewhere <laughs> in a in a closet. They don't go anywhere. They seem to be impervious to guitars, and I pick a lot. And I use、uh, 10 to 52 gauge strings,、um, you know, lead and rhythm all day long, and they don't seem to wear away particularly easily. <laughs>
I've always preferred a rigid pick to a soft pick for electric uh, lead guitar, and I'm going to tell you why. I find that with some of the softer picks, different materials like celluloid and Delrin, all these different kinds of materials, they tend to have a residual memory in the material that begins to adhere to the stresses of physics you place upon it. In other words, if you downpick a lot, it starts to take a bend. <laughs> and also, they move. Something that moves doesn't necessarily have a great consistency. And I would prefer my pick to be consistently the same shape all the time, so that the only thing that is choosing to move is my hand or my wrist or whatever. I like when a pick um, just stays the same shape. Now I used to use stainless steel picks because stainless steel picks, it's the epitome of a pick that won't move anywhere. It's not gonna go anywhere at all, but stainless steel picks destroyed my strings. And as an impoverished student um, studying under, uh, at the time, a young David Kilminster and a young Sean Baxter, when I was at the Guitar Institute in London, um, I couldn't afford to get new strings every week. can't think of a time that I have. I'm sure I have done at some point, but I tend not to. Even if I'm sweating, they seem to stick. It's something in the material that allows it to abrase to my fingers. Abrase? It's the wrong word, but whatever. They come in a variety of gauges. Um, for example, this is a ridiculous three mil thick uh, razor, or they come in like a 1.5 and even thinner. Uh, again, I've got a, a razor. My personal signatures come in a stunning 2mm thick uh, kind of onyx see-through black. I will warn you, you drop them on the floor, they're not that easy to see because <laughs> they're black and they're kind of see-through. So if you want to get one and never lose it, go for a really brightly coloured uh, orange. <laughs> important for me to say that this is a signature product of mine but when I struck the deal with gravity I specifically said I don't want a penny from from the sale of these all I want is just give me the picks <laughs> because I love them so much and I tend to give them away if I meet people and have a chat you know um, by the way if you've met me and I've given you a pick please comment in the comment section below it's true I met Rob and he gave me a pick um, I throw them at people in the audience, I throw them at cameras, and then I lose them sometimes. But I just said, for, for me, for my part of the deal, just give me the pics, and I'm a happy man. So, great company, really friendly people, great product. I urge you to try one. Yeah, they're a little bit more pricey than your average pick. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, it's probably one of the most important parts of your tonal or at least uh, playing experiential, the experience of playing sort of field. Like you got the pick, the strings, the neck, and then the sound, you know, other bits are really, really important too. But the way you connect to your pick is really important. If you disagree, let me know in the comment section below. From my point of view, pick, you know, the continual pursuit of the perfect pick for me was something that was a nightmare. I mean, I went from everything, jazz pick, celluloid, I used to shave them off on the carpet to get the right point, and then when I found this, I was like, that's enough of that. I'm settled. 
Anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this short sci-fi movie followed by a demonstration of a tiny piece of plastic that can be used in many different ways. Have a great day. Take it easy. Chappers out. So it's uh, roughly half past six. Still blisteringly hot. And um, we've pulled up near where the ferry is in Meliha to some barren wastelands where our, uh, our filthy scavenging man is gonna look around for some, for some tech. And I'm gonna dodge mosquitoes for my dear life. Look at this, it's just, there's nothing here. It's just like rocky outcrops and insects and stuff like that. It's great. <laughs> Time to wear a metal mask and put on some jeans. This is the, the fabled piece of detritus that the scavenger sells on a stick. And uh, these two lovely people have been hovering it for us with their magical stick powers. Sometimes they close. Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's probably the best shot of the, of the Zibella <laughs> we're ever going to get. This really random hole with a chain attached to it in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we are nowhere. You've got to wonder what's inside that, huh? That's old. Probably we should dig it up, mate. Dig, 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 dig. dig it up. <laughs> <laughs> no. It took me a while to uh, find the perfect person to play a despicable, twisted, evil, dislikable uh, store owner. But then I found Jeremy. And I was born um, for him. <laughs> <laughs>